Hello again, I am Blunty. Assembling here is a flat packed 3D printer called the ANET A8 desktop 3D printer. It was sent in for review from Gearbest. If you've ever wanted to have a mess around with 3D printing, either as a learning experience or as a way to custom make some cheap and handy dandy objects and accessories, then this 3D printer can be yours for, wait for it, just over 160 US dollars, at least at the time of making this video. The assembly takes some patience and care, but it's all pretty easy to put together. There's even a reasonably good-ish video assembly guide you can follow. The only real intimidating part is wiring up the mains power, which, you know, if you're a careless idiot who can't follow instructions, can kill you. So follow the instructions, be careful, mains power is dangerous. And all the low power wiring is a bit fiddly, but everything does go together with ready to go plug and socket arrangements. So there's no soldering or anything and it's all quite straightforward. Aligning and calibrating the print head and the platform together so your prints actually come out accurately is a bit of a fiddly pain in the ass too. There's no auto leveling or auto calibration, no auto anything actually, which is the kind of stuff you'll find in the far more expensive 3D printer units. But again, it's not hard to do this yourself, it's just fiddly and it'll take a few attempts to really nail it down. But all this is part, of course, of the learning experience. By doing all this stuff manually, you really are going to get a better understanding of the hows and whys of 3D printing. And that's kind of one of the points of buying a DIY 3D printer in the first place, to learn. The unit itself, when all built and ready, looks very much DIY, with wiring hanging loose and mechanical parts exposed, and the laser cut piano black acrylic frame looks nice enough. And the heated printing platform will help make sure your prints adhere and cool correctly. It even comes out of the box with some painter's tape attached, which is one of the things generally recommended by 3D printers because it makes removing your prints from the platform much easier. The print head supports several kinds of common printing filament materials. ABS and PLA are the most common. Now, I have been printing with a few different PLA filaments because as a material derived from renewable sources like corn syrup, it's biodegradable and all around much more environmentally friendly than the petroleum-based ABS plastic option. Though for certain projects, ABS will be the better choice as it has its place and the materials react differently to different environments, all that kind of stuff. And all that too is part of the learning experience here. It will also print with special filaments like the wood laced ones and nylon, PVA, PP, all that kind of stuff. If all these acronyms are bewildering and confusing, don't worry. All I'm really saying here is that you've got a nice selection of choices for compatible printing materials. So sourcing and using them will be nice and easy. The printing volume, or how big of an object or part you can print all at once, is a pretty useful 220 by 220 by 240 millimeters, which is sort of in the medium sized range as far as 3D printers go. The main interface is a bit clunky but serviceable. With a simple LCD screen and some navigation buttons, your printing files will be saved on a micro SD card, which is supplied, as well as a micro SD card USB reader for your computer. So you save the files to the micro SD card from your computer, then you insert the SD card into the printer and select your print from a directory listing. During printing, the screen gives some useful feedback of things like temperatures of the print head and platform and project completion percentage and stuff like that. And while it's printing, it is fairly quiet, but there are, you know, three motors and various gears and fans and belts rolling around, so it's not silent, of course. But it was quiet enough that I could comfortably watch some TV while it was in the same room with me printing away. As a first time 3D printer owner myself, the whole process of building and learning and using the ANET A8 here was quite fun and interesting, but then again, I am a giant nerd, so. <laughs> and I'm starting to get some real nice prints from it too. What I'm showing you here is basically the raw prints, pretty much exactly how they come out of the printer, just so you guys can see what the printer actually spits out. But from here, there is usually a finishing process you do by hand, so some sanding and smoothing, perhaps some sealant or paint, depending on the project. But there's all kinds of things you can do from this point to make the part look more polished and professional. But like I said, I haven't done it because I wanted you guys to see what they look like straight out of the printer, so you can get an idea of how much work you will need to do to make them all nice and polished. But I have already been making some very useful items, a couple of which I've already shown off in my channel here, like the Nintendo Switch stands, a version of which I actually used on the plane trip I recently took to Texas, and it worked wonderfully. I played several hours of Zelda while on the plane using these. Perfect angle for it, secure attachment, super easy to stuff into my Switch carrying case, and just, you know, it worked perfectly. 
I've also got a desk mounted headphone hanger, which I love. It's been super useful, very strong, nice and clean design. I love it. And when it comes to detailed prints, the A8 does quite well too. I made a tripod mount for a webcam that doesn't have a tripod mount of its own, and the quarter 20 tripod mounting screw thread printed great and fit perfectly. Super useful little print. I've been using it constantly ever since. Then there's this, a little battery canister. But this time there was a mated pair of threading that had to print perfectly or it wouldn't screw together, obviously, and would be useless. And again, the accuracy of the A8 was entirely up to the task, sufficiently making these parts mate properly. It was admittedly a bit tight at first, but a couple of times putting it on and taking it off and putting it on and taking it off, it wore it in perfectly. And so it goes. This replacement tripod mounting plate, this cute little Bulbasaur phone holder, which was actually one of my first prints, these melted Lego bricks that I used to test and calibrate various settings for filament temperature and print head speeds, they printed accurately enough to mate with real Lego. You can even 3D print things for the 3D printer itself, like a spool holder, or different cooling fans, or covers for some of the exposed electronics and cables, if that makes you nervous. So, if what you want is a 3D printer for your workshop, then I would spend more on a fancier unit with some automatic calibration and a more robust build. It's going to make your life easier if what you want from a 3D printer is something to, you know, get work done. But... If what you want is something amazingly inexpensive that can serve as a platform for learning, for experimenting, and making some very useful little thingies for around the home to do some product prototyping on and simple DIY projects and repairs around the house and all that kind of stuff, then I can absolutely recommend this printer. You'll need a little nerdery in you to get the best out of it, but that's kind of the point again. So, yeah, I know I've kept a few of you waiting on this review, and I'm sorry, but I wanted to give it a nice long work in to see if any issues arose as the build settled in and wore in. But everything went great. It feels solid. It's been super reliable, if a little temperamental from time to time as far as, you know, calibration goes. And changing the filament is a complete pain of fiddly finger pain misery. There must be some trick to changing the filament that I'm just missing here. Maybe I'll do more research. And getting the printhead properly leveled is also more fiddly than I like. But again, none of this is difficult, just, you know, fiddly. And again, that comes with the territory of a DIY 3D printer kit. And considering what ownership costs you here, well, I'm not taking points off for being slightly inconvenient. It is amazing to me that, that just two years, or even one year back actually, something like this was close to a four-digit price tag, a huge investment. But now you can have a very functional 3D printer in your home for 160 Yankee Doodle Dollars. That's pretty awesome, I think. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.